to the Savvy Radio Show. What's going down? This is your friend, Steve Van Kallenberg. I'm excited. Why about life? Anyway, I don't know why I want to share this podcast to, with you today. Uh, it, it's been a struggle, and I, I feel like I need to do it. I know that my podcast is about entrepreneur, about real estate, about the hustle, and uh, I think that we neglect what's most important. And I believe, uh, you know, family is important, but I believe the most important is your health. And I have been on a health struggle bandwagon for life. I mean, I have, I don't know if you know me, but I have gained 50 pounds, lost 50 pounds, gained 50 pounds, lost 50 pounds. And it's been a lifelong struggle. I'm 48, 47 years old now, bang, and I'm, I'm about to hit the 50 and I, it's just, I thought I overcame it. So for, let me give you some background. And then the goal for this podcast is, I don't even know why that I'm doing this podcast is to help you in some form. And I think everyone struggles with weight at some form or fashion or an addiction. And uh, the when I really start thinking about, you know, people want to be wealthy. Yeah. It just seemed easy to me. So then I just thought that I just learned these key things. And then, but why do I always struggle with my weight? Why is it always taking so long um, with my weight? And I'm like, man, if I can be a millionaire, yo, I can lose weight. And, you know, and I, I, I think it's more than that. So let me give you some background uh, where I have come from in this weight journey. Number one, I've always been kind of a chubby kid as a growing up. And I, I would say fat. Actually, I got really in trouble a lot. People would pick on me. I, I grew up in the inner city. Uh, I got beat up on the bus a lot for being fat, for real. Like uh, I always remember my mom going to JCPenney's or Sears at the time. And we got to go to the Husky section. If that's you and you know about Huskies, man, give me a high five. Because, uh, you know, the pain and, you know, the size has just gone up and at the time and I, and I'll give it, I'll give it credence to an education. Uh, you know, my mom didn't know about nutrition. Uh, she worked three jobs and I think she did the very best that she could. And, you know, I'm honored, uh, you know, just to be where I'm at today. If you knew my story for real, you would understand. But there was several times in my upbringing that I, I was very uncomfortable about my body. To the degree where I was mad, angry, um, I would look in the mirror, I would actually cry. I didn't like my body. I, I was just full of pain and anger. And I, at the time, I didn't know Jesus, so I couldn't just pray about it. I would just look in the mirror, just be amped up, pissed off. And I just didn't like myself. And I always thought that people wouldn't love me uh, because I was fat. And so my prayer as a young child, for real, was that people would love me for who I for who I am. And so I started working on my personality. I know this sounds crazy and you're like, what in the world? And if you knew me personally, you'd be like, I never knew that you struggled like this. And I did. There was several times where I didn't want to exist. I didn't want to live. And I know some really overweight folks out there, you feel that way too. You feel uh, you just want to give up. Uh, suicidal tendencies. And I, I had those. And I actually uh, went through some dark times as a child. But I, I started working on my personality. I, I, I would never know <laughs> it would benefit me later. But I was like, if you can't love me because I'm fat, I know that I could be funny. And I know this is dumb. And I, I don't even know why I'm saying this. But I know there's a reason why that I'm doing this podcast. There's somebody out there that is struggling with this. And, and not only just with the weight, the, the fatness, but I'm talking about with some other addiction. And, and, and I'm reading this amazing book right now about addiction and just re, re, re looking at my own life and like, man, what am I addicted to? And so anyway, at one time in my life, I actually got to 316 pounds and it was a very dark time. I mean, I got to size 44 waist, triple uh, X, and I just was not happy. Um, and if you ever dealt with weight, you know what I'm talking about. So then I had this journey and then I, I got a, I got a couple of books that really impacted my life. One of those books are diets don't work by Dave Swartz, which led to another phenomenal book from a really good friend of mine. Thank you, Zach McDoor, that the secrets of slim people it's out of print, but is, is probably the more, 
probably the same amount of books that I have given away, like Rich Dad Poor Dad, at least several cases of Rich Dad Poor Dad, I have probably given this book away. And I read this book called Secret to Slim People. And I believe the gal's name is Vicky. It's out of print, but you can find it at abooks.com. And I read the book and it was, it was bar none, one of the most impactful books in my life where I lost 50 pounds. And I, I mean, I don't know if this is the episode to break that down, but I did it. And then I lost 50 pounds. And this is around 2000, this is about 15 years ago. And it went well. I just followed the book to the T and it wasn't a diet. It was just a mindset. And I'm like, I overcame and I lost that 50 pounds. Bang, bang. And then um, I, I don't know what happened. I put it back on again. And then just, I had it on for like about, had it off about 10 years. And then I ballooned back up. And it was just, it's just a vicious cycle. And so then I, what works for me is education. So then I started reading another book called Obesity Code. And then I read uh, Forks Over Knives. And then I watched a few movies. And then my, I lost the 50 pounds again. And then I was like, okay, something's not right. And then in my ultimate dream, and I worked really hard on it, is to reach 220 pounds. So if you could do the math, 316 at one time, 220 on another time. So, you know, bang, bang, thank you very much. I know you go, yeah, 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 what it go, Van Calmer. But it it's not solved. You know what I'm saying? I, I realized I, I got to 220 and I'm like, this is, this is off the chain. I mean, physically, every time I look in the mirror, like right now I'm looking in the mirror right here and I'm like, man, I can't believe I look like this. Cause in my mind, I think I'm 300, but in reality I'm not. And, and it, it's an amazing process. And so right now I'm going on and uh, I'm uh, just short of six months of holding on to 220. Now, there's a there's no get wet, get get weight loss quick. Like right, can't can't get rich quick, right? To build an empire, it has taken me over 20 years to to get to this position in my lifestyle. But I'm here today, and this podcast is just to encourage you. So then a couple months ago, I was like, man, I'm you know I was doing this class, it went really well, and then I'm like, I've been thinking about doing another class, and then I'm like, man. I want to do a class on weight loss because, <laughs> and then I'm like, man, I'm like, I wonder what people think, right? You know, this dude, entrepreneur, real estate, the savvy, somebody all of a sudden wants to do a class on weight loss. And I'm like, how could people really genuinely take me serious? And, you know, I, I stopped the naysayers in my mind and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give back. I'm just going to give, I'm going to help you. In some way or some fashion. And that's one thing I want you to understand, man. You can reach out to me. I'm going to post this on Facebook, obviously. You're watching it on Facebook. If you need any help in this area, I don't know uh, how I could help you. Uh, I'm, if you think I should do a class, um, I don't know, man. It, it's vulnerable. But I've, I've, I've made a commitment. I just did this thing called the Savvy Leadership uh, Summit couple weeks ago and I was like you know you got to get out of your comfort zone and I'm telling all these men you got to get out of your comfort zone my Van Kalenberg you got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to stretch and just me doing this video slash recording in my crib is a stretch for me in itself and you know my points today for the podcast and this is one of the longest intros is just tips and so when I started thinking about weight loss and how could I help people I just started writing out all the things down that um that that would that propelled me and so what happened was i i was doing so good I, i've been a vegan for a while i'm not saying that you should be a vegan or not a vegan and then i kind of fell off the wagon and started to have some cakes so you know i'll let you know i like mexican and i am married to a mexican i don't mean nothing but i am 10 percent mexican because my kids are 25 and they can't represent you know i you know whatever but you hear me hear me well that's eric thomas can you hear me can you hear me well it's about time 2021 it's about time for you to drop the pounds the lbs and uh, you know i was just thinking about a post i was going to post on facebook to be motivating i'm like man you know we only got 60 days left roughly uh to make 2020 off the chain i started looking back at my goals and i was like wow i was, I was like man i was dumbfounded with all this murder, we just had murder trees in Oklahoma City. All these trees died. It's been a murder 2020, but there's been great things out of it. There's some goals that, that I've achieved through that. Weight loss is one of them. 
And so I was slipping, right? This couple of weeks, maybe a month, man. My mind, like I got injured on a race. And then that, that, that spiral, and I'm trying to figure out what, what gets me high, what's getting, what gets me low. How, do I, how could I fix things? And so then when I was like, man, I was trying to dial back in, man, I can't get this far and fall and go back. I'm not getting the 50 again. I'm not gaining 50 pounds ever again. First of all, that's the first decision you got to make is make a decision. I ain't going to do it no more. And so when I made the decision, I started writing down all the things that inspired me to keep on rolling. And so I wrote this down. This is all random, okay? And this is from a of, collection of books that I've read or podcasts. I've heard. I don't listen to podcasts, so that's not true. But books that I've listened to and read and just from friends over time. And I hope that these tips, and I'm sorry for the intro, so long. But I'm going to get you dialed in. I'm, I'm going to get you juicy. It's 11-minute intro. That gum. So here's the tips. First of all, there was a couple of times, number one, and I don't even know these. These are not even numbered, but... One was food is fuel, okay? So when I started thinking, all of a sudden, when I started gaining weight back just recently or, or falling from the wagon, I was like, I started started making food a pleasure. Like, mm, I deserve this or I want that. I can have that because I'm lost. What, what, whatever your mind is telling you, it's a lie that food is not for pleasure. It is for fuel. Now, this is confusion when you read some of the books. Like, when you read Secrets of Slim People, the book talks about you should enjoy the food that you eat, right? But only stop when you're satisfied or when you're full. So there's going to be some conflicting messages here. But one message that has propelled me to stop being chubbalucious, and that is this. Food, Van Kalenberg, is fuel. You don't put in your car anything different than fuel, right? You don't put no milk in there. You put fuel. So when I started thinking about that, that's one thing that got me out of my, my confusion was to remind myself that food is fuel. The other thing is like when I'm starting eating, I'm chowing down. I stopped asking, I started asking myself, are you hungry? Are you satisfied? Is that, is that all? Do you need more? You sure? I think you have to, I really believe that you really have to self-talk yourself to success I mean, if you read any personal development, that's number one. You got you got to do personal development on a daily. But I, you know, I'm listening to this this rapper right now called Cadence, and he has this this song called "Die Daily." I mean, you got to you know die daily. What are you dying daily to your flesh? Die daily. And I have to ask myself every day: Are you hungry? Can you stop? Can you fin? Do you have to eat that last? Now, there, there's a lot. A lot more premise behind this, meaning if you grew up very poor and you were beat to death that you have to eat everything on your plate or you have to uh, you can't be wasteful of food and people are dying in other countries. You know, all that is for to say, I don't know. But for me, that does not work. You got to stop when you're satisfied, even if you got three quarters of the pizza left. And even though we all know everybody can handle a whole pie of pizza. You hear me? So you've got to just ask yourself, are you hungry? Are you satisfied? And then the other question I wrote down here is like, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied where you're at right now with your food that you're eating? Are you satisfied? Eat for nutrition, not pleasure. You got, you got to get, you know, and we sell it. We celebrate around food, right? Halloween. Everybody's, ah, oh, we're going to eat. It's only Halloween only comes once a year. So you, you, you've got to, you got to get out of that mentality. Reward yourself with a book. Reward yourself with a mountain bike. Reward yourself with a savvy t-shirt. Reward yourself with something else, but do not reward yourself with food. This is just tips. This is just books that I've read. Deal with it. And another thing is, sometimes you, you, you could do this on your own, but I noticed the success. And I know in my business, I'm going to tell you right now, I know that I'm fortunate to be where I am, and I believe the last latter part of my success has been based on having a successful team, period, or partnering with the right people, double period. But what I realized, accountability is the linchpin of all the daddy-o wins in your life. I'm telling you, when you call someone a coach or a person and you have to be accountable, no, I ate too many Krispy Kremes this week, 
it brings accountability and it's just it just weighs on your mind and you just start thinking about it and I'm not going to show up to this meeting without my homework done. I'm not going to show up to this meeting late, right? That's accountability. If someone's waiting on you, I definitely recommend and, and you know, and not everybody's the best accountability partner for your weight loss or for your business or for whatever the case may be. For me personally, I've oh, I'm a coach, okay? I'm not a physical therapy coach or a physical coach or a diet coach or whatever. I'm a I'm an entrepreneur hustle coach, okay? That's that's what I do. I help people triple their income. That's my whole goal in life is for you to be financially free. When I die, on my t- I'm not going to have a tombstone. It's going to say, he helped people get financially free. And a lot of people that I help financially free that you won't even, even know. And I, I don't even want no glad, nothing. I'm just, this is just, I'm, I, I, I live financially free. I think you can too. I, I live healthily now and I want you to live healthily now. But the reality is, to really explode in my business and the people that I work with as clients, it's always been accountability. I call this dude every Monday. I'm like, yo, where are we at? What's going on? What's your struggle? And I could just see his business has, has tripled in value in a short amount of time. And I believe it all boils down to accountability. It's not Steve Van Kallenberg's super coach. I'm going to tell you, I'm not perfect. I'm a human and I make a ton of mistakes. But I realize from my own world and for other people that I help, it's about accountability. And I spent way too much time on accountability tip because I think we're just ashamed, afraid, or think we can't afford it. It's dumb. You've got to find someone that you can be accountable to. You can. Now, here's a big one. You are responsible, fatty, for your weight. Yep, I just called you fat. And it hurts and it stings. I'm telling you, my system is not working for you. You're probably going to hate me now because I said you're fat. The cool thing is I don't know who you are because you just let that play it in your mind. And that's the reality. The reality is just that you got to take ownership. Of course, I haven't read that Jacko book. I was reading another book and he referenced the Jacko book. And you got to take responsibility. I'm telling you right now, you got to take responsibility. That cheeseburger that you're putting in your mouth, the lifestyle that you're living, the time that you're watching TV or playing video games or whatever the you're doing, you're not taking responsibility. You're trying to hide out. It's time to get exposed. It's time to come out of the closet. And I'm telling you, I'm going to join with you because I am uh, an emotional eater. I notice that when I'm struggling, when, when I just made a mistake on a, on a transaction, I'm, what I just did, I mean, I just got back from a leadership summit and straight out the gate, I made a mistake. And I'm like, man, this, this could be, this cost me. Now I'm at every, every day I'm thinking, man, what do I do now? You got to take responsibility. All right. Here's a little tip that I figured out myself and I don't, I got no uh, physical proof to prove this, but I, I think for me, when I get off the bandwagon, like all of a sudden I'm like eating the wrong food. I haven't exercised and I just noticed that I, I eat more food than normal. And I, what I realized is I think your stomach shrinks in three days. Right. So you may have this binge for a couple of days, but here's here's some hope. I believe your stomach is amazing. It it contracts. It it restricts. It's off the chain. You've got to realize that it's not the end of the world. Get get back up. I need three more days and my stomach will shrink and my stomach will get back to where I need to be. And then I won't eat as much. What happens is, is that we're eating we're overeating unconsciously. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I, when I started talking to myself, and I think I wrote these down, but one of the things I realized is like, I'm a, I'm a multitasker, not really, but I, I am, I don't want to be. That's why I said not really. I usually tend to read or research why I'm eating or working at my desk. And I'm like, that's the number one carnal sin for an unconscious eater, eater because you're not paying attention of what's going in your body. You're just eating. And I see it in some people's lives when I hang out with them, even in my own family. And it crushes me that we're not aware that we're putting in, you know, 3000 calories by eating like six pieces of pizza and your body's like, yo, it's too much. You only need one. You only need two. But you don't know because you ain't paying attention because you aren't playing a video game or you watching something on TV 
or you like me reading, acting like you're doing something special or doing some kind of research. But what I'm doing is I'm not being aware and I'm hurting my body and I'm hurting. And then that causes me to be depressed. And that causes me to feel like, man, you something whack, Van Kalenberg. You hear me? You see the snowball effect? Stop that mess. Be aware. Know that your stomach takes three days. Here's another one. Slow down. Slow your roll. You got a roll. You need to slow it down. That's right. Slow your roll. I'm telling you, eat slow and enjoy that mess. If you read uh, another book that's off the chain is Intuitive Eating. Whew, Google that. There's a little cliff note version. Man, what that, I think that's been the pivotal book for me that has transformed my life called Intuitive Eating. Well, now there's another book in there. But let me tell you that it's in, you know, I just need to slow down. I just need to just enjoy what I'm doing and cut the phone off, cut the distraction off. Sometimes even in my own crib, I'll have breakfast and my, my kids are already on fire, ready for school or catching up on some work or doing something. Sometimes I'd remove myself from the table and take my bowl of cereal and roll over to the other room and just eat by myself quietly and enjoy the process. I know when I do it like that, I don't overeat. Another tip. Now, I fell off the wagon for like a couple, about a month. My Fitness Pal app. I just read the other day that Under Armour just sold that mess to some company, a private firm, which is crazy. But I don't know why. I was doing some research on it. But it's a very powerful app. I believe that's one of the apps that have, have just propelled me to my weight loss, to my ideal body weight. Is because when I track what goes in... I don't do, oh, when I'm up to 17 or 2,000 calories, I'm like, yo, you got to slow down, big boy. And I know, how did I get wealthy? <laughs> it's real simple, man. I just tracked what went in and tracked what it went out. Any money that came in, I didn't buy nothing. I only bought stuff, I only bought assets that make me money. When you dial in on your finances and know on a spreadsheet or you got Quicken, QuickBooks, and you really anally watching what you're spending, you won't overspend. And then when you don't overspend, you have cash left over, hopefully. And if not, you need to figure out how to way to make more money. Then the money you have left over, guess what you do? You buy more assets. Then you buy assets. Assets make money. And then the snowball begins. When you're doing it for five years, it compounds. When you do it for 10 years, it's off the chizane. Okay? Just like weight. Just like weight. You've got to track it. Track that banana track every detail and i know just from personal friends when they find that app and they find victory in that and they kind of gauge on it man it, it it works when you fall down get back up yeah we're gonna marinate on this one when you fall down get back up yep have i fallen <laughs> man i wish i could tell you how many times i've made a mistake Eight queso when I didn't want to, or just just probably 30, 40 minutes ago, I had some chocolate covered peanuts. Man, I went ble pleasure. When you fall, when you fail, you get back up. Failure is feedback. What I realized, I was eating too much peanuts, and then I was like, oh, Van Kalenberg, you back to it, huh? Huh, big boy? Yep. So now I'm talking to myself. Now I'm getting. Uh, food prep going. So now um, my wife, I wonder what they think. I got my bag of peanuts, the chocolate ones, dark, maybe, maybe milk chocolate, no milk, put them in there. And then I, now I can have one of those little containers instead of just keep eating. So that's another tip for you. Meal prep works. Here's another tip, man. There's a lot of tips up in here. I was just writing full throttle. Think of yourself as a machine. We talked about that earlier. Food is fuel, but man, you're a machine, you're healthy. Man, when you study athletes, I definitely would recommend listening to books like Finding Ultra, phenomenal book. I know if you're not a runner, but it's definitely an inspiring story about to hear this dude come from basically Chubba Lucius to the best, well, one of the best ultra marathon runners. And he was just going, he couldn't walk up some steps and he was out of breath. And that, that's, that was a defining moment for him. Uh, MJ DeMarco he says you have a defining effing moment. What's your defining moment? Maybe it's this video. Maybe it's his time. All right, fat boy Van Kalenberg can do it. I can do it. He's, look at that dude. Whatever it takes to get you angry, to make a decision, you need to make a decision today. 
You got, you, what can you do in 30 days? What can you do in 60? How can you make 2020 off the chain and stop listening to everybody else? You can do it. Think of yourself as a machine. You got to prep, prepare, get the right tires, get the right clothes, whatever it takes, do it right. All right, so now here's another thing. So one thing I realized through this whole process is I have these nasty habits. Well, I don't know if I would call them nasty, but I got some habits. One of those habits is I got a sweet tooth sometimes. After I eat, I'm like, man, I got to have something sweet. And so over the years, I came up with a scenario for that. Maybe grab a vitamin and eat a vitamin. There's some sweet vitamins or grab some bubble gum, sugar-free, preferably. But do something to start breaking that habit. If you're a smoker, you got this habit. When you quit smoking, you got this habit. Replace a habit with a new positive habit, and it takes three weeks. Recognize them. Recognize the cost that it's hurting you on that habit. That's some of my notes right there. Recognize the. Sometimes you have to invest in things to be motivated. All right, this is one of my faves. So. I realized I, I, I just did this super run in Utah. My shoes got jammy lamped. And then I did something totally wrong. I had two pairs of shoes. Don't do that. I had two running shoes. And I would, would run 100 miles in these one shoes and then switch up to these other shoes. And then I run 100 miles in those shoes and I switch back, right? That's dumb. I learned, see, again, at, at 47 years old, and I've been running for about three years now, man, I, I continue to make mistakes, which, A, frustrates me. But then I realized it's feedback. And so I had to reboot and I had to basically get rid of those shoes. I lost track of which had mileage on them. And I'm going to, you know, I got to dump those shoes, but I got excited. I got motivated because I got some new shoes. Now, what I'm saying is not to go out and buy new shoes every other day, but maybe a shirt. If you hit a hundred miles this week, or, I mean this month or in two months or set, I'm going to hit 10 miles in the month of November, whatever the case may be, some things or a new pair of socks, some things will get you motivated. Here's another way to get you motivated working out is create a new music list. Uh, I just found Spotify. Don't clown me, but that's, you know, I'm late to the game. That's what it is. But um, when I make a new playlist or I find a new song and I like Spotify for some crazy reason, I don't know why I waited so long because maybe I'm a little thrifty, but they have this discovery week, weekly discovery. It's this button that I hit and just it spoons me up new songs and then I put a little heart on them. I'm like, man, I get amped up and then I put a new playlist and next thing you know, I hit the road and I go run. That motivates me. Sometimes when you run with someone else, do it. Here's something that I wrote down. Um, new playlist. Here's another one. I found during when I started getting back into running, I found this thing called Audible, right? You know about Audible. I'm an Audible fanatic. But I started forcing myself, and it was hard. I, and when I bring this up to people, they like, how do you do that? I'm like, it was hard. But I started doing it. I started listening to audiobooks while running. Now, I wasn't working. When I was running, I wasn't working on my form, and I for sure was not working on some speed. When you're listening to Errol Nightingale on The Strangest Secret, all slow jam, you know, I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, how you doing? Success is all what you think about, you know? <laughs> But I realized I just forced myself. You could change anything. You can do anything if you want to. You got to make a decision. You know, I'm, I'm going to get educated. If I'm going to drop the LBs and I'm going to I'm going to get to the dream body that I want to get to. I might as well. I love killing two birds with one stone. I, I love getting a double return for my effort and my time and listen to an audiobook. And right now I'm going to give you a heads up. I got 300 audiobooks. I probably haven't listened to all of them, but probably over 200 audiobooks. And that's because of running. And so I got my education on and I got my workout on and I did the both together. And it just doesn't always work. I go through seasons. Like when I ran a marathon locally, uh, a virtual marathon, I realized, first of all, man, running is another crazy thing, but I, you would never know that I would like to run. But I liked running because the, the endorphins that it gives you, but the education. And so I figured out running that I could, I could listen to about 40 minutes, 30 minutes of an audio book, and then I got to switch over to Spotify, which irritates me because I got to pull my phone out, but that's just what it's worth. That's what it takes. You got to do things that are going to irritate you. You got to do things that you never thought you would do before. You've got to make a commitment to be the best version of yourself. Thank you, Jim Rohn, for being a legacy for me. 
If you don't know Jim Rohn, that's J-I-M-R-O-H-N. Life change, get that personal development in you. So it spiraled down from my, my life's not organized. Okay, so here's another thing I realized. I posted this today on Facebook. It said, clutter breeds procrastination or creates procrastination or depression that's that's what i put on there i put it on there it was it was a it was a crazy thought and i realized that's what it is when your stuff is not organized you're not going to eat right so whatever you do from this video or audio whatever you're listening to get organized with your food get organized in your space on your office desk or whatever it is get organized and that will be it, it will it will make you feel better and you will perform more. I noticed that when I've been so busy, I've been traveling these last three weeks. My stuff's all over the place. My little counter, my, you know, my desk, it's all looks like a hurricane. And, I'm, and it just, it's a Debbie Downer. And I spiral down. So you can't be casual with your organization. Even at my garage yesterday, when my homeboys came over and helped me, thank you very much. You know who you are. Thank you for serving and helping me. And that's another thing. You got to serve people. This dude, I, I, I can't wait to serve him in some magnitude and just give back. But, man, when I got my garage, this little shelf built and hung from the ceiling, I was like, man, it wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. But I was like, man, I need to enjoy being organized so I can perform better. When I start thinking of it like that, I'm getting better. Don't spiral the other way and don't be casual. Casual breeds casualties. Thank you, Jim Rohn. Man, you casual, you want to get you want to get clipped up, snipped up, death. Don't be casual with your relationships. Don't be casual with your weight. Don't be casual with your business. Don't be casual. All right, here's another one. I think you got to keep perspective and look in the mirror to reach a certain way to keep yourself going. Okay, yeah, that's you know, like I said earlier, you you know, I lost weight so many times. I don't even know where I'm at. Like right now, when I'm looking in the mirror right now, videotaping this deal, I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm, I don't have eight chins right now. I've had a double chin before. I don't even know where that mess went, but you got to look in the mirror. And I, this is, there's this rapper, you know, you're overweight. You don't even check in and check and weigh yourself. Uh, you know, it's this weird song, some rapper and you know, you're just going along. You're not even checking in. You're not. You're going along. You're not even weighing in. You, you gotta weigh in. You gotta check your bank account. You, you gotta know. Do you have enough money sustained? What's your goal right now? Six months of living. One year. Ten years. Cash flow. How much? You gotta check in. Is that house producing? You gotta do it individually. You gotta figure it out. You gotta check in. You gotta weigh yourself. Stay focused, and you will surprise yourself. So I do these short bursts of goals like five days I'm gonna do this just five push-ups or I'm gonna I got a big thing going down November 13th in my life a little life change situation I'm like that's only two weeks away what could I do for two weeks to just celebrate this extra thing find stuff that works for you and do it push your and another one is oh yeah here's another one bang you know do the things unsuccessful people won't do You've heard that from, I think, Brian Tracy, maybe Jim Rohn. I'm going back to the old school. I've been going back to the old school for about six months since the pandemic, just listening to all old audio books, reading old audio books, reading newer versions of those books. And I realized you got to do the things that you don't want to do, like get up early in the morning. And, you know, successful people do the things that unsuccessful people won't do. Let me say that again. Successful people do the things that unsuccessful people don't do. Now, that's how you be successful is do the things that you don't want to do. Thank you, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy. I don't know who that the, the, that quote came from, but you got to do it. You got to you got to meal prep. You don't want to do it. You got to go do some cardio. You don't want to do it. You don't want to read. That's that's the stupidest thing. I love it when someone I know you're not my friend when I, I suggest I don't read <laughs> like you're dumb. You, that's the only way you're going to be successful in any endeavor is reading, is learning from a master and growing. I know that sounds harsh, and I know I just offended you, and I'm trying not to. I'm trying to snap you out of the game, and you need to stay focused and do the hard things. Do the things that you don't want to do. I, I love, 
um, Coggins, David Coggins, this dude. It's funny how some of my friends are like, on the dude's nuts. Like, yeah, that guy's great. And then I got some other friends. Man, I can't handle that dude. I don't like that guy. It's interesting. It's different perspective. And the guy that told me that, I'm like, I love that dude. I, I love my friend that doesn't like David Coggins. Now, that doesn't change who I am as a person. But I just appreciate to, to disagree. You got to appreciate to disagree. There's some people in your world that are not going to like that you decided to be a vegan. There's some people in your life that decide to only be 90% vegan. Welcome to the club. There's some people in your world that are you going to make some decisions that I've realized that I should have been making a long time ago. Some areas of my life I wish I would have put more money into. For example, like food prep. Why would I want to spend an extra $20 to get some containers? And you may be thinking $20 doesn't make sense. But I wish I would have done that earlier and started focusing on food prep. I thought that was really weird. I thought that was only bodybuilders did food prep, man. When I realized that I have an, an issue with food of pleasure, food prepping changed my life. Because I can only eat what's on there. Not that I was restrictive, but I finally just put the brakes on, slowing down, consciously eating what I ate. And then I was satisfied. See, the goal here is to be satisfied. Now, if you're satisfied with your weight already, man, I can't believe you made it 36 minutes. And if you're not, that's okay. Send me a message and I'll help you. Stop eating crappy food. That's another one. Stop, just stop doing it. Like, I know, I'm telling my, one day my wife came up to me, man, I'm telling you. I was just get dialing in on my finances. I was, we were start really ramping up the, building other wealth. And we were rocking, Walmart was hot. This is about 10 years ago. My wife came up to me. She's like, yo, Stephen, we need to start shopping at Sprouts. What? Shopping at Sprouts? That's $300 more a month. That's a car payment. That's a rental property. But then I realized, you know, Dan Calvert, listen, man, you got to make more money. <laughs> I'm serious. And I started shopping at Sprouts, and that's where we shop out. It cost me $300 more a month than Walmart, but we're not eating crappy food. We're not eating, eating, eating. We're not eating GMO stuff with genetic modified crap, Latin preservative up to wazoo, conscious, better produce, make more money and eat better food. Stop eating crappy food. It was really hard for me at the leadership summit just to buy a bunch of this crappy food. And it got back to me from somebody else, which was interesting Hey, man, this one dude said to this other dude, he's like, well, I normally don't eat this type of food, you know? And I was like, you know, I got love and respect for you for that. That you did eat it and you didn't complain, but you just dealt with it. And sometimes you got to adjust, but don't eat the crappy food. And even if the food is in front of you crappy, you may make a decision to say, nah, I'm not going to do it. And I do that in my own crib. Sometimes I got to go to the back freezer and whip out an Amy's dairy free meal. Tofu scrambler is one of my faves. It's off the chain. You need to try it out. I used to thought tofu was whack. And then I started eating this one meal. And I'm like, Amy's. Thank you, Amy's. Thank you, Walmart. $4. I can eat a 400-calorie breakfast and feel like a machine. Habits. Um, I, tend to, I, you know, I tend to have a hunger right before I eat. Okay, here's, an, here's something I started. When you start being conscious of what you're eating... And how you feel and perform. And if you read those books I mentioned, they will help you go through the process. But I noticed, I'm like, okay, I'm hungry. So I'm like, okay, I know what I'm going to eat. I'm going to go eat Amy's meal or I'm going to make a sandwich or whatever. I intend to snack before I eat my meal. Man, if that's you, raise your hand. Like, let your boy know, because I'm fascinated about this one. I just realized this, I mean, within a couple of weeks ago. And this is when I started writing these tips out. So I had consciously had to slap myself in the face and say, Van Camber, can't you wait four minutes to the microwave to stop before you have to jump on some chips? And I realized I just had a bad habit. I just, when I was like, okay, I made a decision to go eat. And then I would start snacking before I ate. And then I just constantly overate. So I just started dialing in, writing in, kind of just paying attention to what I was doing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to put my meal in the microwave. I got four minutes, don't eat nothing for four minutes. Now, it kind of bothered me because it was an addiction. It was a bad habit. But then when I ate the meal and I was done with the meal, I didn't have to eat that pre, pre-appetizer. pre Interesting habit. So that's just something um, 
that really inspired me this last week just to identify what my habits were good or bad. I know we talked about the bad. Hopefully you got some good habits. And I hopefully this was a long video and I hope this will help you, uh, you know, on your journey of life. If this inspired you in any way, you know, let your boy know. I know this wasn't business savvy, real estate crushing or savvyinvestors.com type of material that you may be looking for. But if you were impacted anyway, let me know. And if there's another subject that you're hurting or you want some more help, we let your boy know and I'll get it to you. Have a great day.